In this looks tutorial, we'll cover how to work with images, inserting them, and refer re referencing them in documents. So to insert an image, uh, you should always insert it as a float. So suppose uh, here I'm in the middle of my text, I want to insert an image. I will come and first insert uh, a figure float. You could either press this icon or also find it under insert float and figure. And you can see the um, similar to a figure, there's also uh, tables and algorithms, other, other uh, floats that will work similar uh, to what I'm about to do. So I'll insert my figure float. Uh, go ahead and uh, at this moment if you want it you could give it a caption or a little statement for the figure uh, let's say if you want to label this figure go ahead and insert a label and again just like equations you could uh, label it with something that you'll remember it by now when you want to insert the figure just go before this uh, before the figure, if you click right over here and insert figure. So the previous one was just a float, not the actual figure. Now we're going to insert the actual figure. So you need to browse and find a picture. All right. And if you just insert the picture, you'll see there's the picture right in the middle of your document. Now, this is the how it's being displayed in the document. If you want to change the size of this just in how it's displayed in the uh, as you're viewing the document, not in the output document, just in the view, go back to the figure by clicking on it, go to latex licks options and change this option that says scale on screen to you know whatever you want. Again, this twenty five percent now this is only for us to look at, but the output document, if you build it, you'll notice that the figure is still huge in the output document. So in order to change the size of the figure in output document, we go back in the first tab under graphics, you'll see there's a couple of different options here. You could either scale the output document by a percentage or uh, lots of times you want to set its specific width and height. So if I want to make it, you know, about an inch by inch, I could set it to 2.5 centimeters by 2.5 centimeters. You could also choose inches in here if you want or other units. So now if I set this and then build the output document, you can notice now the figure is about an inch by inch. Okay, inside this float, if you want to build, there's a couple of different ways we could build sub figures. So inside of the float, if you insert another float, if you just go back and hit float, you'll see that it automatically comes in as a subfigure. And you could give the subfigure a name. Let's just do it. Okay, and then let's insert a figure in our subfigure. Okay, let's scale it and make it two by two inches by two inches here. All right, any of the figures, if you want to center, uh, right click right next to the image and go to paragraph settings and hit center, and that'll center the image. Now I want. Let's say I want to put another sub figure. I could just I could just highlight the whole float. There's another way to enter it, and hit Control V. That'll automatically put in the exact copy of all the settings you set up for the other one. So here I'm just going to go change the image to desert, and notice it'll keep all my settings and view and all this stuff. And here I change it to Figure Two. Okay, and let's see what this output looks like. Okay, so now you see I have two figures, but notice this, the whole figure itself doesn't look centered. So let's see if we can fix that, because I have two sub-figures in here. Let's center the sub-figures themselves. So I'm going to right-click ne right next to them, go to Paragraph Settings, hit Center. So now you see my sub-figures have been centered. And if we rebuild the document, 
Okay, so now you see this is centered. Let's see what happens if I enter four of them. Okay. So now you see it's stacking them across. Now we could put them like, if you put an enter in, now they're labeled and notice it automatically does A, B, C, D on these. And if you want to change any of your if you want to reference them specifically in your document, you could always enter a label um, for this guy. So since my big figure is named example figure, I may do something like that just just so I'll remember what, which label this goes with. So now in my document, I could show... I can reference my figure as, so we'll put fig, and go back again, use our cross-reference icon, so you can see there's two, I want to, this will reference my big figure. And let's see if we could enter, let's see what happens, what kind of label it creates for our sub-figure. Okay, so and let's build our document. So now you can see I can reference my figure as figure one, so which is what this is labeled, or figure one A. And you notice that's referencing the A there. Okay. If you want the parentheses around the way A, there's ways to do this. Uh, you just have to look this up on the Licks help. Um, online and it'll give you ways to modify the subfigure uh, labeling. Uh, we may come back and make a, another video on that in the future. And I think that's all for the basics of working with figures. Another way sometimes I like to do, uh, actually before I end, one other way to do subfigures is sometimes I'll just enter a, I'll create a float Okay, and instead of using subfigures, another thing you could do is insert a table. Okay, so what you could do is now I created a figure float, and inside of the figure float, I'll go ahead and insert a table, and I'll make it, um, uh, let's say I make it, um, let's go, I want two, I'll make it two columns but I'll add six rows here and I'll uh, say why in a second okay so whenever you insert a table it always creates this uh, first row like that so I'm going to delete that row so now what you could do is you could insert just a figure in each one of these okay Okay, so now notice if I wanted to create four, so I have, okay, inserted one too many. But I, if you look at the bottom, this gives you everything to work with tables, so I'm going to delete this row. So now you could treat this guy as, you know, you could manually type in A, okay, and similar, instead of letting licks do the, Okay, and then go ahead and change this to, you know, B, C, and D, whatever you want. And then you don't want these bars around the table, obviously. So uh, you could highlight the table and go down here and undo all of the ta table borders. And then we'll go ahead and center it. And we see we have uh, created a similar effect. Uh, to what we did previously with Lix subfigures, okay? So you can see the, the spacing here is a little bit different between